day there. I'm Richard Musgrave Evans and today I'm in South Australia on the Murray River. We've got some beautiful cliffs. We're on Big Bend in the Murray River so it's the biggest cliff on the river itself. And what I want to do today is paint fairly large. Got a beautiful day, no wind, full sun and uh, looks pretty good so I'm pretty excited about getting into this one. Now what I've done as usual I'm painting on Belgian linen, palette knife and oil paint and also it's a clear Belgian linen, it's clear prime so it looks like it's raw but it's actually got a clear primer on the surface. What I've done is basically just blocked in the composition, I've got the horizon line fairly level and uh, I've put in a few darks just to compose the picture and then I'll go from here. Okay, alright, let's do this. Now, the biggest difference to me at the moment Looks like that cliff is in shadow, so I need to um, bung that one in, so I'll do that. Let's see what we've got here. Just try a bit of burnt sienna and yellow ochre and see what tone that comes up as. Yep, yeah. Might alter that a little bit. put a little bit of white as well, it was just slightly too rich and the white just frosted it off a bit. Now today I'm going to be working with just the palette knife, that's how I like to work. Just bunging all those shadowy tones in. It can be a bit of a challenge only using a palette knife but at the same time it's just the style I like to work with, um, so that's what I do. Now, as it recedes off a bit, I'm just putting a little bit more of a uh, purple and blue mixture with it, which is graying, just graying that nice uh, shadow tone off a bit. Just cooling it off as it recedes into the distance. Okay. I'm also noticing there's a nice on top of that orange there's also some nice pale sort of grey colours where the weathering of the rock has happened so just putting a bit of that in some of that weathered tone. Okay. Let's go a bit darker for the two meat. Tones near the top here. Oop, that's a bit too dark. this beautiful white limestone that we've got, what have we got here? Beautiful white limestone, when it's casting a shadow, it's this really beautiful purpley blue colour. So I'm just putting them in now. Like so, where some of the shadows are. It's okay to put a bit too much in, then you take it out later if it's too much, if you've got too much, you just uh, go over it. It's better to put the darks in first, usually. Right, I'll just stand back and have a look at that. Don't want to stand too far back because the edge of the cliff's right there. There's a bit of a drop off. Okay. I think I'll go with the colour of the water itself, the Murray water. Put the reflections in. It's always a nice colour. I like the colour of the Murray water. Let's see what I've got here. I've mixed a bit of burnt sienna, yellow ochre, and a bit of viridian green and white. And just see. too far off, it needs to be a bit richer so I'll put a bit more yellow ochre, maybe a tad more viridian green, that's just rich in the colour of a bit. Okay. 
Another thing I can see is also those banks are reflecting a bit of orange, so I better put that in before I get too carried away. I've got a blend of that green colour but also the orange half mixed in. Nice downward stroke to give the illusion of reflections. as it gets closer and burns down. I'm richening up a little bit as it gets a bit closer here. It's a beautiful colour. Keep going. Keeping it fairly thin in the water. Now I'm not putting a lot, oh, that's a little bit too much, whoops. I just put it very thin here so I'll be putting the blue sky across it soon, so I don't want it to be too thick. The reflection of the blue sky will come across it. First I think I might actually, uh, uh, let's have a look now. I just put a bit of that limestone rock in because it is very obvious. Painting in the order of visual importance. But I want my main piece to be about here. There's not a lot of room here with the palace in the way. Not to worry, it's all part of it. Right, let's have a look what we've got here. Right, the sky is the biggest difference, let's do it. Start down near the horizon. Quite great off really near the horizon, so you can see what we've got here. Flies. We've got flies of course. kind of neutrally grey, maybe slightly yellow ochre dominant. Because what happens is in the low atmosphere like this, there's a lot of particles in the atmosphere and uh, the sun's lighting up those particles. So the sun is usually a warm tone. So quite often you're getting the reflection of all those light particles lighting up to a nice warm tone in the sky. And even the earth itself is reflecting reflected light back up. This bright sunny day with all that, it'll be reflecting it back up and lighting the sky up. Oops. Gone over the lines there. I can take the paint back off like so. If I go over the lines. That's okay. I've got a clamp here which is in the way, but that's just part of it. Because that's what's holding the painting on. Later on, when I take the painting off, I'll just smear that colour into that area. 
All right, now go a little bit, uh, maybe a bit of a cobalt blue and yellow ochre. The low part of the sky has got a bit of green in it, you'll see there. That's what I love about painting outdoors. All those subtle colours are much more obvious than when you're uh, sitting at home trying to remember what the cuss was going on. Yeah, maybe a bit more yellow ochre. Just warm it up a bit. Fun starting a big sky like this. Quite often do long marks to get the paint spread around, but once I've done long marks, I like to shorten them up a bit. Gives the illusion of light having little short dabbling marks. Right, go up a notch in the sky. Just mixing up a bit more straight blue with this one. If there's a bit too much of a jump, which there is a little bit here, it's not too much of a problem because I'll blend them together. darker, more cobalt blue, right darker again, Because I've started fairly grey down here, and then I get into really rich clean blues up high, it really gives the illusion of light and distance down below. If you start off grey, work up to a strong colour. Stronger colour up here. Clean. I just got a little bit of green from the water in the sky then, which I didn't enjoy. A bit darker. Now, just added a bit of magenta to the sky mix for the top part, which I think I've put too much in, so I'll have to add more blue and a bit more white. It's alright, it's pretty good. 
could actually have a little bit more magenta. Looking up to the heavens up there. Ocean blue. If I can get over to this side, I'll be right. I can only just reach because that paint there, I'll end up wearing it. I guess you won't see it, the top's blue already. Blending, blend those colours together, like so. I'll come back to the blending because uh, this oil paint, even though it doesn't in theory dry in the time, I find it actually does just a tiny bit. Like if I come back to this in say 15, 20 minutes, it'll just be that little bit more, that little bit firmer, which makes it easier to blend. Okay, I'm going to stand back and have a look at that. Right now, I'm going to paint a bit of a foliage light tone. I've already got some shadow colours like here of the foliage. Now I'll go for the, uh, the lighter tones. What have we got here? Have a look. A bit more yellow over to warm it up a bit. It was a little bit cold in colour. Just only lightly touching. A little bit of light coming down here, so I'll just bung her in. And I'm only just touching with the palette knife. So the undertones come through. Now I'm just mixing up, whoops, what do we got here? Mixing up a bit of a magenta blue grey colour that'll half mix with the foliage. Seems to recede it off, so when I'm painting the distance, it'll look further away up here. Just needs a bit more of that. A bit more of that red colour. Half mix, half mix it. I like the half mix colour. Right. Some of the stronger ones. Yeah, a couple of marks that way.
Okay, now, just move some of that out of the way. Can I introduce some of that sky colour into the water? Let's just see what tone I've got here. Got to go a bit lighter in tone. Yep, even a bit lighter in tone, believe it or not. Just touch in. Add a bit more of that water tone down here, I reckon. What have we got there? Let's get over here, let's have a look. some of these grassy colours. Sienna and yellow ochre. A few upward marks to give the illusion of grass. Okay, now there's just a little bit of warm tone in here I might introduce, just to make it pop a little bit. Clean all this out of the way. What have I got here? Clear up. Clear up 
clear up this edge here. Yeah, right, uh, clean this here. top edge of this cliff is giving off a nice lighting effect so we'll start putting that in there. There's a nice, on the top of that cliff, a nice Mix up a bit of foliage colour from the top of the hill here. light blue, pick up a bit of light blue and magenta, look at this uh, reflection in the cliff now, just a little bit more in here I noticed. Just bring that up a bit. Just painting where the light's hitting the top of the cliffs. Take a bit of paint off sometimes. up a colour here, a light grassy sort of tone at the base of the cliff where the light's hitting it, a bit of yellow ochre and green and whatnot, have a look at that, yep. Thank you. 
Just take a bit of paint back to get a clean edge. Okay, let's clean some of this area off. I've got a fresh area to work with to get a few highlights and accents. Okay, what have we got here? Shadow foliage here for a few trunks. A few tree trunks on the edge of the river here. Vertical marks. Wide. Okay, what else we got? Upward marks like so will produce little tufts of grass. Good old versatile palette knife.
All right, so that's about it. Uh, all the basics are pretty much there from what I'm looking at. So what I'll do is I'll grab the camera and let you have a look at it. All right, no worries. All right, let's just have a close up and see what we've got here. You can see I've really played up on the warm and cool colours. I've got those beautiful orange reflections in the cliff and I've used a really chunky technique as opposed to the thinness and transparency of the water. Now in the foreground cliffs itself I've gone for variety, as much variety in technique as I can. And uh, on the distance I've uh, put a beautiful blue to send the hills back and made the sky quite grey and that makes the whole thing recede back into the distance. All right, well, there you go. Well, there you go. The end of another painting in another day. Now, don't forget to subscribe and forward it on to your friends and press the like button. Until next time, cheers.